Hello class, in this video I'm going to explain how to do exercises 5.1 and 5.2. These exercises concern informal proofs of the Boolean connectives, so ultimately we're going to have to write up some answers in English explaining whether these arguments are valid or not. So the first thing we do is check out one of the arguments we're given, like this one in 5.1, and then decide whether or not we think that it's valid. What we need to then do is defend our answers, i.e. give a proof of its validity or invalidity by appealing to the truth tables. So this is what I call the truth table method. Here's how you do it. You first put the premises in the truth table as their own independent columns, and then you put the conclusion lastly. Finally, you fill out the joint truth table and you just do a mechanical check. You see if there's any rows in which all the premises are simultaneously true. If there is, then you check the conclusion and make sure it's true too. If the conclusion is false there, then you've got a counterexample. If the conclusion is always true in every such row of the truth table, then the argument is valid. So let's see how this would look in a truth table. Uh, I filled this one out for you already. First I put my two premises, P or Q and not P, and then I put my conclusion over here. Notice each of these is its own independent column in the truth table. I then filled out my reference columns in canonical form and computed each of these columns for you. So now we just need to go through our check. Let's see if there are any rows in which the premises are both simultaneously true. Well, not the first two rows. Ah, here we go. On the third row, they're both true, not on the fourth row. So the third row is the only possible counterexample, but look at this. The conclusion is also true here. So indeed, for every row in which the premises are true, the conclusion is true too. Hey, this is valid. All we have to do is write this up in our written document now. We can say exercise 5.1, valid. Uh, because whenever the premises are true, namely row three, the conclusion is also true. And we're done. That's it. That is a, d oh, I don't need to save that. That's a definitive explanation. That proves that the argument is valid because indeed we filled out our truth table correctly. Uh, so what would the next one look like? Uh, argument 5.2. This says we have some premises, P or Q, and Q, can we infer not P? Well, here I filled this out in a truth table for you too. So here we have the first premise, P or Q. Now we have Q, can we infer not P? Well, let's check each of these rows. Uh, look, here's on row one, the premises are both true and the conclusion false. Ah, we're already done. We found the counterexample. Indeed, it's not the case that if the premises are true, the conclusion is always true because we found the counterexample in row one. Now, be careful and check this out too. Look at row three. Here the premises are both true and the conclusion is true. Don't be fooled. Just because there's such a row like that does not make the argument valid. That's not why we said the other argument was valid. We said the other argument was valid because every row on which the premises are true, the conclusion was true. There happened to be just one such row. But if there's a single counterexample, like on this row two, then indeed the argument is not valid. So now what we can say in our written file for exercise 5.2 is we can just say not valid because there is a row, namely row one, on which the premises are true and the conclusion is false. Done. We've proven that it's not valid. So that's how you do an example of an argument that's valid and an argument that's not valid. That'll give you a sense of how to complete the rest of these exercises for your problem set. Thanks.